Hello, hi, and welcome to Soulful Restoration with me, Lyric the Curator. I have the honor of being your host on this journey of reflection, learning, and soul education. I hope this podcast will help you to adjust the lens with which you see yourself because the battle is won when you see yourself right. So join me in this episode today as we're delving deeper into self-identity. Our identities are a combination of traits that distinguish us from the next person, right? Shaping our decision-making, how we view things, and eventually directing our destiny. And while there are plenty of similarities amongst each other, no one person is exactly the same or has the exact same combination of traits to the next person. And that's why our fingerprints are different. And that's also what makes us unique. And that's where our power as a person lies. Part of this uniqueness requires looking deeper into where we come from, probing the past for answers to who we once were so we can conceptualize who we will become. We are the past manifested in the present, reshaping the future. And why we are here is because of the decisions and the lives lived before us. As, as a result, we spend, and we should spend, quite a bit of time looking as to how we got to where we are, locating ourselves today based on history. So why does identity matter and how does it shape us? Does being cognizant of the makeup of our past better facilitate our progress in self-identification? Well, this is what we're going to try and find out in this episode. So this is a conversation, right? Between me and you, even though it's just me here. (laughs) So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, those things. So in this topic, we have five talking points that I'm going to try and go through, right, to better expand on the topic of self-identification. First of all, let's clear the elephant in the room, right? Let's address the elephant in the room. You're not the only one that's asking the questions of who you are, where you came from, why it is, why you are where you are, why it is that your family is where they are, and all the politics that come with it. That's the natural progression of life. In fact, if you're an adult and you haven't asked yourself this question, we'll talk after this episode. Okay, it's not a crisis, right? It's normal. The only time it becomes a crisis is if you're unable to find the answers to those questions. It's completely normal to want to dispel what you thought you were because of new information that has come to light. Or you want to re-identify yourself because now you have an understanding of things and how they have progressed to where you are. But we also have to trade carefully because you don't want to dispel even the foundation of your principles. And that's what we're going to talk about at some point, right? Principles. What are they? We'll get there. Your past shapes you. In some shape or form, it shapes you, right? It molds you to become who you are today. But it doesn't define where you will end up. And that's why you need to sort of figure out in your mind what the the accumulation of knowledge doesn't necessarily mean the adaptation of knowledge. I'll expand. You can know something and not act on it. That's a natural cause of things. You know it because you know it. Right, It gives you a fuller picture. You've got a broader perspective. For example, if you came, if you live in Joburg, for example, right, and your family relocated there, it doesn't mean you're going to always live there. You may, but it doesn't mean always mean you will. right? And how they got there is something you might want to know. Knowing history doesn't mean that you need to act upon it in the present day. It's already happened. But it does help you figure out how you got there and where you should be putting your energy into. It's kind of like finding your purpose within the greater scope of humanity, right? History is there to help you figure out where you are, locate yourself geographically, and then move on. It doesn't help you fight battles that were in the 80s in 2024. Oftentimes I've heard people say, you are who you think you are, and to a certain extent, that is true. I mean, thoughts is, is where we start off. You start off with the thought. But you actually are what you do, 
right? You can know something, you can believe you're the greatest, but if you're not going to put the work in, you're never going to accomplish that said goal, which means you're never going to be the person that you thought you were. But thinking is a good place to start because for the longest time, we have outsourced our ability to think. And that comes from the history of perhaps slavery, um, oppression, and all of those which we'll delve deeper into. We're not delving into these issues to bring out animosity. We're doing it to understand why we are the way we are and how we can change that programming. Remember this, the breakdown happened over time. And so the rebuild will also take time. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be the perfect person. But every day, every moment, when you take the decision to take a step forward, that's what matters. That's what counts. Acknowledging your roots and acknowledging your past is a very important step in everyone's life. That's how you come to accept what is, right? Understanding comes with acceptance. You acknowledge this is where I'm from, this is who I am, this is the DNA that's in me. These are the pros and cons of having it. Even in hospitals, when you go to your doctor and they ask you about your medical history, they also ask about your families because whether you like it or not, their DNA is in you and by association, what they have, you have, right? But what you choose to carry on, that's solely up to you. I've also heard a quote or maybe it was a treat. These days, they're all the same, right? Where someone says, until you get to the age of 30, you can blame your background. But from 30, you become the background. And that's the reality, right? It simply means when you acknowledge what was and what's been, you basically find peace with it. And therefore, you can then start moving on towards defining yourself given that background. What parts of that history are you going to adapt in today's life? Basically, I'm asking, what principles from our forefathers, from our ancients, are you going to take into today and apply them moving forward? And this is where we need to dig a bit deeper, right? Going back two, three generations is not enough. You've practically lived with them. Those are your grandparents. And if you're like your great-grandparents, you need to go in 10 generations, okay, seven, if you will, go that far back. Because those were great people. I mean civilization and all the greatest things that have been done in Africa in general come from those generations. And if we tap into those principles that they had and apply them in today, then we can progress as a people. Which moves us to our next point, right? Defining the perimeters that apply to you, right? This is where you say, okay, my people were intelligent, my people were hardworking, my people were lazy. It's possible. Like, no one has only great attributes, right? There are also some negative stuff. Uh, mine were drunkards, whatever the case might be. And then you say, this is what I will not participate in, and this is what I will continue forward. That's where you start defining your legacy as a person. And that then becomes what I would call your constitution of self. Right, the motives that you have signed and sealed for yourself and what you choose to move forward with. That's your constitution. Whatever, anything that you will do from that point forward will have to meet the prescripts of your constitution. And you can change it. I mean, you get to know things, you grow, you change what you like, what you don't like, and therefore you will adapt accordingly. But the principles, your foundation, more or less will always stay the same. We've discussed acknowledging versus defining as how I put it. But to just make it easier for all of us, let's wrap it up by saying acknowledging says, oh, that's what happened. Okay, cool. It's information. Defining says, this is what I choose to do about it. There's action. It's proactive, right? Being reactive is not progressive, and that's why we are not progressive for the most part. We're reactive. So in order to be proactive, you need to start defining and then taking responsibility. So by defining, you say, this is what has happened. These are the parts of it that I choose to bring into my life in this day and age. This is what I choose to discard and also know why. And then this is what I choose to do about it. And then you act on those daily. Yeah, it doesn't happen overnight and you don't stop. You do it daily. Every day you wake up and choose to be that person that you envision. At times you then find, while you're finding yourself and you're being woke, 
<laughs> you because that's what happens, right? You discover something and you think you're like so woke, you figure it all out, and then you walk out into the world and the world hasn't changed. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. The world won't change because you've changed. There's it doesn't happen concurrently, right? But if you take the world down into granular forms, you'll find that the world is societies, right? It's made out of societies. And societies are made out of families. And families are made out of individuals. So if the system is too big to break, you need to take it a bit, focus into the granular form and say the system might be too big today. But if, at a granular level, it's, the system starts with people. It starts with individuals who then form families, who then form communities and then their societies, and it's the world. And so even the change starts at that point, at the granular form. So it's okay to own your transformation. Don't expect the world to transform along with you. Slowly but surely through your own transformation and through you living out your truth in a respectable manner for everyone, it starts to adapt. So I think that's the one thing I'd caution you against once you woke, don't try and be woking everybody else up. Take the time and allow the graceful people to find their own paths, their own way. Ooh, a fun fact, you don't have to have all the answers. No one does. Like, if we all had the answers, we'd probably retire and nothing would happen. Ask people, right? Ask the right questions. Sometimes someone will say, I've been asking, but I'm not getting answers. You're probably not asking the right question at that point in time. But that doesn't mean you should stop. Also, read. Yo, guys, please, read. <laughs> There's so much material. Just read. Please. Thank you. <laughs> ah, it's cut off in the corner. Please, please, please. please. <laughs> okay, audiobooks. Apparently, we don't all read, but at least audiobooks, okay? Get yourself audiobooks and listen to them. Please. Um, we don't have to relive all the mistakes that have been made in human history. That's why learning from those who've already lived through them helps us to skip the, all that time wasted and move forward. Life is like a relay, okay? The button gets passed from player to player. You don't need to go and start at the beginning like the first player. Just take it from where it is and move forward. And that's wisdom. Wisdom is knowing that you don't need to live through all humanity's mistakes in order to be wise and experienced. You can skip it, learn from what has already been done and start writing your own story. Okay, that's today's lesson <laughs> on self-identity. And I hope you took something from it. Um, before I go, we're going, we have a little segment called Soulful Takeaway. Maybe we'll cut it to Soul Takeaway. You never know, right? And um, this is where we just take a little key points from what we spoke about or maybe extract from books that you'll never read or essays that you'll never read just to give you something to ponder on because for the most part, we don't necessarily remember all the conversations we have, but we do remember the principles that stood out for us. And this is that part of the podcast where we want to give you something that stands out for you to think about long enough until we come back with the next episode. Um, so this episode's soulful takeaway is taken from an essay titled The Human Race is Not Yet Free, written by Ben Okri. And it reads as follows. Before we can create a new world, we must first unearth and destroy the myths, the lies, the propaganda, which have been used to oppress, enslave, gas, torture, and starve the human beings of this planet. Facing the lies of history is a basic human responsibility. It is unpleasant to do, but liberating to accomplish. It liberates all of us. All right, that is it. First episode done. I don't know how many more we will have. That's, that's the reality of the story. But I hope you took something from it. Thank you so, so, so much for joining me on this journey of soulful restoration. I hope something from today's episode spoke to you. I hope some shackles were broken by the truths that we've unearthed today. Um, and till next time, take care of yourself, take care of those around you and that which surrounds you. From me, Luke, the curator. Bye for now. <laughs>